Hello again. This is section 2.7, combining functions. Um, so what we're going to look at in this section is how do we add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions, and then also how can we do what's called a composition of functions, um, where we actually substitute one function into another function, right? And we'll also look at domains of all of those compositions um, to make sure we understand how we can find restrictions on those domains. All right, so we're going to start here with just the algebra of functions, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. So if we have two functions, f and g, and their domains are a and b, the functions f plus g, f minus g, f times g, and f divided by g would be just f of x plus g of x, f of x minus g of x, f of x times g of x, and f of x divided by g of x, right? That's what those operations mean. Now, in terms of domains, whenever we're looking for the domain of two functions being combined now, we're gonna have to look at the intersection of the two domains, meaning what do they share in common? What's the overlap of those domains? Now, the only one of these where that's a little bit different is that we have to keep in mind with division that our g of x function cannot be zero. And the reason for that is we can't divide by zero. Okay, so that's the one additional restriction we'll have to keep in mind with division, but everything else, we're just looking at the f of x functions domain, the g of x functions domain, and then looking at the overlap between those two domains. All right, so here we've got f of x equals one over x minus two, g of x is equal to the square root of x. We wanna find f plus g, f minus g, f times g, and f divided by g, as well as the domain of each one, okay? so. If we start with f plus g of x, all we're gonna do is add together the f of x and the g of x functions. So we're gonna have one over x minus two plus the square root of x, and that's it, okay? So that is our answer. We've added together those two functions now. Now in terms of domain, Remember, what we want to look at is what's the domain of f, what's the domain of g, and then we're actually going to look at what those, what the overlap is, the intersection of those two things. So basically here, I'm looking at the fact that my denominator of f of x, x minus 2, cannot be equal to 0, which means that x cannot be equal to positive 2. I also know in this case that I have a square root of x, and I can't have negative values in the square root. So x must be greater than or equal to zero for that one. So now when I put all of that together, I know that I need to be greater than or equal to zero. I cannot be equal to two. So that intersection now is gonna start at zero, including zero, so we use a bracket. I'm gonna go up to two, and I'm gonna use a parenthesis because I don't want to include the two. Then we're gonna have a union, parentheses two, all the way to positive infinity. And so this right here would be the domain for the sum, the addition of those two functions. Okay, so f plus g of x is this function right here. And then its domain would be what I have down there, interval notation. All right, now the subtraction, if we do f minus g, we're still just taking the f of x function, one over x minus two, and we're subtracting the square root of x. Now, if you remember on the previous slide, we said that the addition, subtraction, multiplication are all just gonna be the intersection of those domains, right? So the domain of this function, the subtraction piece, is gonna be exactly the same as what we got for the previous one. Right? So no additional work is needed there. That's gonna be our domain for that one also. And then we can do our product, f times g. So f times g of x. Now we're just taking one over x minus two, multiplying by the square root of x. In this case, we could just multiply and put the square root in the numerator. So that's going to give us the square root of x over x minus 2. And so this would be our product of those two functions. Okay. And again, in this case, that domain would still be exactly the same as the addition and the subtraction. All right, and then the last one we need here is the quotient f divided by g. 
This time we're going to take 1 over x minus 2. We're going to divide that by the square root of x. And remember, when we're dividing and it involves fractions, we can multiply by the reciprocal. I'm going to think of this as square root of x over 1. We're going to take 1 over x minus 2. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal, 1 over the square root of x. So that should give us 1 over the square root of x times x minus 2. And so that would be our, our function for f divided by g. Now, this one here, we have to be careful, is not going to have exactly the same domain as the other three. Because remember, in this case, we have to keep in mind that our g of x function cannot be equal to zero. Well, remember the g of x function was that square root of x. So this time, instead of x greater than or equal to zero, for this one, x must be strictly greater than zero. So now the only thing that changes in our domain is that zero is going to get a parenthesis instead of a bracket. We're still going to have the restriction at two, and it's still going to go to positive infinity. So now that's the only thing that's changed is zero is not included in our domain for the division where it was included for the other three, the addition, subtraction, and multiplication. All right, now at the bottom here, we're looking for f plus g of four. So all we have to do here is substitute four into that sum that we've already found, right? So f plus g of four. I'm plugging into my f plus g function, so that's going to be 1 over 4 minus 2 plus the square root of 4. And if we simplify that now, that's going to give us 1 over 2 plus 2. And then if we find the common denominator there, that's going to be 1 over 2 plus 4 over 2, which is 5 halves. And then same thing with f minus g. We're just going to substitute 4 into that function that we've already found. So if we plug that in, that's going to give us 1 over 4 minus 2 minus the square root of 4. Again, that's 1 half minus 2. Common denominator, 1 half minus 4 over 2. And when we subtract here, that's going to give us a negative 3 halves. And then if we do f times g, that should give us square root of 4 over 4 minus 2. That's going to give us 2 over 2. And so that's just going to be equal to 1. And finally, we're going to do f divided by g of 4. Again, I'm substituting into what I've already got up there. 1 over the square root of 4 times 4 minus 2. Simplifying that, we get 1 over 2 times 2, which is 1 over 4. So again, once you've already found the sum, difference, product, and quotient, then all you have to do is just substitute that value into what we've already found, and then just make sure you simplify. Again, just keep in mind with these domains, the addition, subtraction, multiplication are all going to have exactly the same domain. It's only the division that might have an additional restriction. So just keep in mind that, that g of x cannot be equal to zero you're finding the domain for the quotient. All right, composition of functions. Okay, so given two functions, f and g, the composite function f of g, um, or the com composition of f and g, is defined as this right down here. So f of g of x is going to be f of the g of x function. Okay, and so what I'm going to talk about when I refer to these this function is what I'm going to call the inside function, and then whatever is out here now is going to be my outside function. Okay, so if you hear me talk about inside and outside, that's what I'm referring to. 
Whenever you're doing a composition, whatever comes second there, right, is going to become your inside. Whatever comes first is going to become your outside function. All right, so we've got f of x equals x squared, g of x equals x minus 3. We want to find both f of g and g of f, and then we'll talk about the domain of each one of those. So if we're looking at f of g of x, again, I can write that as f of g of x, where g of x is the inside function, f of x is the outside function. My first step here is I'm going to go ahead and take whatever my g of x function is, and I'm going to substitute it in there. So that tells me I'm finding f of the g of x function, which in this case is x minus 3. So just in place of g of x, I've just put x minus 3 because that is the g of x function. Then I'm going to take that x minus 3, and now I can substitute it into the outside function, which is the f of x. So everywhere I see an x in my f of x function, I'm replacing it with x minus 3. That's going to give us x minus 3, all squared. Now, in terms of domain this time, if we look at our original functions, all I care about is the domain of the inside function here, which is g of x, and the domain of my final answer down here. Well, x minus 3 squared, there are no denominators with x's, there are no square roots, so there are no restrictions on my final answer. Then I'm going to go back to the g of x function. x minus 3, again, no denominators with x's, no square roots, no restrictions. So for this one, my domain is actually just going to be all real numbers. So negative infinity to positive infinity. Again, whenever we're doing a composition, we have to check the final answer, and we also have to check that inside function, because if there are any restrictions on the inside function, we have to include them in our overall domain. All right, now we're going to look at G of F. We're finding g of f of x. Again, my first step, I'm going to substitute that f of x in there. So now we're looking at g of x squared. And so now I can take that x squared. I can substitute it into the g function everywhere that I see an x. And so that's going to give us x squared minus 3. All right, so again, in terms of domain, I'm going to look at my final answer, and I'm going to look at my inside function. Well, the final answer here, x squared minus 3, no x is in the denominator, no square roots. That's going to be fine, all real numbers, no restrictions. f of x, again, x squared, no x is in the denominator, no square roots, all real numbers. So overall now, there are no restrictions. And so my domain for this one is also going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now that we have f of g and g of f, now we can actually come down here and find f of g of 5. So I'm looking at my f of g of x function. I'm substituting in 5, so that's going to give us 5 minus 3, all squared. Simplifying that, we would get 2 squared, which is just going to give us 4. And then if we want to find g of f, of 7. I already have my g of f function. I'm going to substitute 7 in there, so that's going to give us 7 squared minus 3. Do your exponent first. That's going to be 49 minus 3, which should give us 46. So again, the key here, especially with the domains, don't forget that you always have to look at the final answer and the inside function to get your domain for your composition. All right, so now we've got two new functions, square root of x and square root of 2 minus x. First one we want to find here is f of g. So again, that's going to be f of g of x. My inside function is the g of x, so I'm looking at f 
of the square root of two minus X. And now I can substitute that into my F function. And when we do that, that should give us the square root of the square root of two minus X. And all I'm doing there is substituting square root of two minus X everywhere I see an X in the F function. And so we have a square root around the square root of two minus X this time. Now, in general, right, we could actually simplify that because everything we have is inside both of those square roots. So this could actually turn into a fourth root of two minus X. And the way I get that is we have a square root and a square root. The index of both of those is a two. And so we can multiply those together. Two times two gives us four. That's how I got a fourth root in that case. Now, in terms of domain, if we look at the final answer, we have an even root, meaning that we can't have any negatives inside. So I know in this case that two minus X must be greater than or equal to zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and solve that now. So if we move the two over, that's negative X greater than or equal to negative two. Then I'm gonna divide by my negative. And remember when we divide by a negative, we have to flip our sign. So that's going to give us X is less than or equal to positive two. Now, we also need to consider the inside function, right? So I'm going to come back up here. G of X was my inside function. So looking at that, we also know that two minus X must be greater than or equal to zero for the inside function. Now that's going to give us exactly the same restriction, right? Because it's exactly the same inequality that we had before. So in both cases, we get that X must be less than or equal to two. So now when I write my domain, we're gonna say that this goes all the way from negative infinity up to two. And we are including the two this time, so we're gonna use a bracket. Again, in this case, both the final answer and the inside function had the same domain, right? So we don't have any additional restrictions, but we do need to check both because it is possible that sometimes our final answer will not include all of the restrictions that the inside function has also. All right, so now let's look at G of F. So again, we're looking for G of F of X. This time our F of X function is square root of X. We're looking for G of the square root of X. That means I'm gonna substitute square root of X everywhere I have an X in the G function. We're gonna have square root of two minus the square root of X. Now this time we cannot simplify that, right? The square roots don't go around everything inside. Okay, so in this case, we have to leave it as just the square root of two minus square root of X. Now let's think about domain. For this one, we know that final answer, two minus the square root of X, because it's inside of a square root, it must be greater than or equal to zero. Again, I'm gonna move my two first. That's gonna give us negative square root of X, greater than or equal to negative two. I'm gonna divide by my negative here, and give us X is less than or equal to, sorry, square root of X is less than or equal to two. Then we're gonna square both sides. So if we do that, we get X less than or equal to four. All right, now, the other thing we have to consider is the inside function. So remember, if we go back here, we have this F of X function as our inside. F of X is just square root of X, which means that X must be greater than or equal to zero from that inside function. So we can see in this case that the final answer and the inside function actually have different domains. So we have to consider both. So when I do this now, I need to be greater than or equal to zero and also less than or equal to four. So this domain is gonna go from zero to four and both of those values will be included this time. All 
Okay, now it is also possible to compose a function with itself. So in this case, we want to look at f of f of x, which just means we're finding f of the square root of x. So now I'm going to take that square root of x, I'm going to substitute it into the square root of x function, which should give us the square root of the square root of x. Now, just like the first one, right, when we had the square root within a square root, right, and everything was inside both, we can actually rewrite that now as the fourth root of x. Right, so now, let's think about domain. So again, I'm going to look at my final answer there. It is a fourth root, which means that x must be greater than or equal to zero. Then I'm going to come back to my inside function, f of x, which is the square root of x. That's going to be exactly the same thing. So in this case, we just know that our domain is going to go from 0 to positive infinity. And our final answer and our inside function have exactly the same domain this time. All right, and then our last one down here, g of g of x. And I'm looking at g of the square root of 2 minus x. And so when I substitute that in here, we're going to have the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2 minus x. And I'm just substituting that square root of 2 minus x everywhere I see an x in that g function now. Now, in terms of domain, we're going to have 2 minus the square root of 2 minus x. Because it's inside of a square root, it must be greater than or equal to 0. So if I move my 2, that's going to give us negative square root of 2 minus x. It must be greater than or equal to negative 2. I can then divide by my negative. That gives us square root of 2 minus x. Flip your sign, because we divided by a negative, less than or equal to positive 2. Now to get rid of the square root, we're going to square both sides. So we're going to have 2 minus x less than or equal to 4. Now I'm going to move my 2 over. So we have negative x is less than or equal to 2. And dividing by the negative gives us x must be greater than or equal to negative 2. So that's the part from our final answer. Now we go back to our inside function, which is g of x this time. Well, this time we have a 2 minus x inside of a square root. So 2 minus x must also be greater than or equal to 0. We subtract the 2. We get negative x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Divide by your negative. Again, don't forget to flip your sign when you do that. We get x is less than or equal to 2. So now when we put all that together, we know that we need to be greater than or equal to negative 2 and also less than or equal to 2. And so this domain now is going to go from negative 2 to positive 2, both values being included this time, and that's going to be our domain. But again, here you can see why it's so important that we look at not only the final answer in its domain, but also go back to that inside function and make sure we include any restrictions that we would have had on its domain also. All right, so now example five, we want to find f of g of h of x. Okay, so we're looking for f of g of h of x. Now, the rule here is we're always going to start inside and work our way out. So the innermost function this time is h of x. I'm going to take that h of x function and I'm going to substitute it in there. So we're going to have f of g of x plus 3. Now I'm going to take the x plus 3. I'm going to substitute it into the g function. So if I do that, that's going to give us x plus 3 raised to the 10th power. I'm just taking the x plus 3, 
plugging it in for the x in the g of x function. And now finally, I can take what we got there and I can substitute it into my f of x function everywhere that I see an x. Well, in this case, we've got an x in the numerator and denominator. We need to replace both. That's going to give us x plus 3 to the 10th power over x plus 3 to the 10th plus 1. And so this right here would be our final answer for f of g of h. The key here is to start with your innermost function, substitute it into whatever comes next, and then whatever we get from that, then substitute it into your final function on the outside. All right, in example six. So now we're given f of x equals the fourth root of x plus nine. We want to find two functions, f of x and g of x, such that f of g would give us that original function. Now, the way I typically think about this, right, this is f of g of x. So if I can figure out my inside function and just figure out what's happening to that inside function, that will give me the two functions that I care about. So I typically start with the inside. So I'm gonna say in this case that my g of x is equal to, and the thing that we have on the inside this time is this x plus nine. So I'm gonna let g of x equal x plus nine. Now to get the f of x function, we just wanna ask ourselves, what are we doing to that x plus nine? Well, in this case, we're taking the fourth root of it. And so our fourth root is gonna be our function for f of x. We're gonna call that the fourth root of x. Now, you can always check yourself just to make sure that your values make sense, right? So in this case, if I were to find f of g of x, we would be looking at f of x plus 9. And then if I substitute that into that f function, that would indeed give us the fourth root of x plus 9, which is the function that we started with. So these would be our two functions for f and g this time. Now, do not use x as one of your functions, okay? Because that's an easy way out, right? And then you could just call the other function the original function. Okay? You always want to start with your inside function being something other than x, and then just figure out what's happening to that function. All right, so that's all we've got for that section. Um, please, again, let me know if you have any questions about anything. Send me those questions through WebAssign. Um, stop in during student hours if you need to. Otherwise, have a great day, and I will see you next time.